Welcome to the Get Back, Music Work Talk in Central Texas, Fridays at 1 p.m. Brought to you by the Austin Federation of Musicians and with the Unemployment Compensation Advisory Committee. The Unemployment Compensation Advisory Committee are members of the Austin Federation of Musicians, Local 433 of the American Federation of Musicians, a.k.a. the Musicians Union. Uh, some of us work as uh, contractor 1099 workers, and others work as employee W-2 workers in various aspects of the music industry. The goal of this session is to share our experiences, including trials and tribulations related to the Texas Workforce Commission, or TWC, with other musicians in the state of Texas to aid in navigating the TWC application process. We are not experts in unemployment assistance. We are musicians. The information contained herein does not constitute either legal advice or an official pronouncement or a position of the Austin Federation of Musicians, but rather is only the personal opinions of the panelists. The panelists do not give legal advice or make official rulings on agency matters, should not be cited as authorities in any matter before the agency or when dealing with agency staff about a case, and must minimize their involvement with administrative processes. They also do not give legal advice on any other matter, and any information they should give should not be used as a basis for taking any employment-related action. Before taking any employment action that could adversely affect an employee or before using any sample form or policy you may obtain from this group, you should consult a licensed private sector employment law attorney of your choice. All right, welcome to the Get Back. Uh, Russell and Mark are joining me today. I'm Aaron. Hello again. Uh, it is August 27th, <coughs> 2021, Friday. And uh, man, things are still happening. Uh, lots of stuff happening. Man. Uh, we always start with the links at the bottom, of course, which are sort of the, the best way to keep track of things uh, as far as sources of information in general. Uh, but if there's anything we need to include in there, let us know. Um, yeah, we also usually start with uh, beverages. I'm uh, having coffee in my Blues Crawlers uh, cup here. What are y'all drinking? Uh, some kind of as usual. green tea of some sort. I'm not there sure you go. what. <laughs> I like your cup, Kaz. Yeah. Is that a Kaz cup? Oh, man. Yeah. Look at that. That's, like, that's slick. Product placement. <laughs> we'll send it you the a, bill. <laughs> a, gift, a gift from a fan. Excellent. Excellent. Man. Well, uh, gosh, I, we should probably just dive right in here. Um, there's lots to talk about. I guess we, sh we could start <clears> with, the, with the unemployment stuff. Um, we, we talked last year, or last, last year, last week, uh, about more musicians uh, receiving that notice from the TWC that says something like, we didn't receive your documents and you're going to have to pay back this, this uh, assistance if you don't, if you don't uh, submit these documents or prove that you're, uh, you're self-employed or something like that. Um, and we've, we've heard from several of those musicians where they, within 48 hours, got another notice that said... <coughs> That seemed to say like, oh, just kidding, uh, we're waiving the the re the repayment of that. But it didn't say that there was a mistake in sending that notice to begin with. So it's a little bit weird. Uh, but then we there's other musicians that are still waiting to hear. Um, so that is uh, terrifying, and our hearts go out to <laughs> to everyone um, that's received that. Um, yeah, because uh, it, it's a significant amount of money that of course no one has right now, and. Now things are being canceled again, and it's it's really not not cool. Yeah, uh, have you guys heard about any of that stuff? Heard from anybody that that's that's received that? Um, I received that months ago, mm -hmm. so I, I I may have been in if there was a, a first wave of that of those notices. I guess I was in the first wave, uh, and I don't know anybody who's received um, who's received that notice lately. Okay. Yeah, there there seems to have been another wave just lately. Yeah, and I remember you you received it uh, what two two three months ago, right? Maybe three months ago at yeah. least. Yeah. yeah. Since I, we talked last week, I, I I have not been made aware of anybody mm -hmm. else that's received those notices. Okay, uh, I we did hear from one musician last week um, that received it about the time I think you received it, Mark, um, and that musician started the appeal process, and it ha seems to have not actually started. Um, at the state level, so we, we had to yeah get in touch with our state senator's office and everything and 
Try to get that musician some help, and there we're still waiting to hear what is happening with that musician. But the mm-hmm. the musicians that we've heard from, by and large, that that received it recently in the last two weeks, have gotten that you know that that retraction or that waiver notice uh, right afterwards, which is kind of kind of upsetting because they're they're not actually saying that they made a mistake in sending this terrifying notice to begin with. They're just saying, oh, you don't have to pay it now. And so yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what to say to those musicians other than our hearts are with you. And uh, um, Well, it does. Uh, I mean, it sounds like whether you receive the first notice or the second notice or both, that it would be worth talking to the state senator's office or and or calling TWC mm-hmm. and toughing it out on the phone call. Because, you know, who knows what that means? It's not clear. Yeah, it's really not clear, and that's that's one of the <clears throat> been one of the problems all along. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, if uh, yeah, that that that's an excellent point, Mark, for sure. So, yeah, good to good to have things settled. Um, yeah, because we don't know what's going to happen next. So, um, speaking of things that are happening next, um, the the other thing with unemployment is uh, there was a, a press release yesterday from the Texas Workforce Commission. Um, because the, the, the state overall unemployment rate is about to fall below or has fallen below 6.5%. Um, their extended unemployment insurance benefits uh, are about to stop because of that. Um, apparently that, that's something that's only available when the unemployment rate is above 6.5%. So that doesn't affect those of us who work as self-employed people or freelancers. But the musicians that get traditional <clears throat> UI benefits, um, because they're they're employed with like W twos, um, and they're classified as employees, uh, that that will affect them. Um, and so now that that ex- if you're on the extended UI benefits, those are going to stop after uh, September 11th. Uh, so yet another uh, stoppage of of benefits that I, we we assume uh, the TWC and the Texas state government are you know, thinking are, are going to drive people to go back to work or something. But uh, as we know, we're, you know, we're already doing all the work we can. So, yeah, not super helpful, but uh, it is another thing that's coming up on the horizon here. So Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I consider this to be pretty distressing, honestly, because, mm-hmm. you know, obviously musicians and a lot of other people have been really suffering in the last year and a half. But in a way... What we're going through now is worse because there are so few help aid things out there like TWC, like the PPP program, like city programs, like et cetera, et cetera, that we all tried to avail ourselves of in the last year and a half. Well, almost all of those are gone now, but we're in the same boat employment wise that we were a year ago, April or a year ago, May or a year ago, June, which is that you know, most of the work is canceling. A lot of the work is canceling. A lot of the work is dried up. It's pretty, I mean, I, I find it pretty distressing that <clears throat> it doesn't seem like anybody either on the city level or the federal level has snapped to the predicament that a lot of people are heading into right now. And I, I mean, I don't know how to change that, but it's just, I don't know, for me, it's kind of distressing. Yeah. I, I I agree with you 100%, my friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, of course, you know, our our business even more so, you know, the musician business. Yeah. You know, like yeah. we've been saying the whole the whole time is our business is not going to not going to recover until well after everyone else is back to work and is comfortable going out just for fun because that's that's our business. You know, we are an entertainment business. Um, people have to be comfortable going out you know, for groceries and work and, nece- you know, necessary things before they're comfortable, you know, yeah. for, you know, going out to, to see music and, and socialize <clears throat> and, and everything else. And yeah, yeah, we, we need to keep making people aware of that, that our business is a long way from coming back a hundred percent. And actually it's going away again, right? With the, with the variant surges. Yeah, we're still losing. That's, that's still the problem. Losing again. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of cancellations <clears throat> this week. Yeah. Well, that that leads us, I guess, to the top of our 
our news stuff. Uh, we we had an article in the paper about Batfest. Uh, there was another fest that got canceled uh, a few weeks ago, right? I can't remember what it is now. Um, oh, uh, there was another New Orleans festival that canceled yeah. besides Jazz Fest. That's right. Zero. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, big things, um, and that that just you know reinforces the the usual point is, uh, you know, get get your stuff on a on not only on a contract but a union contract. You know, um, in these types of situations, you know, you may not always have enough leverage, you know, to get get the band paid necessarily, but at least you have leverage to get the reschedule. You know, to get on get on the uh, the rescheduled event. Um, and have some, you know, have some some power there. Um, whereas, you know, the, the folks that don't have a contract or don't have a union contract just get kind of swept under and be like, oh well, we'll just start again next year and see who wants to. Do it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's it's. Uh, and to you, at least you, you you have your deposit money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what uh, what was it? Jazz Jazz Fest paid paid the musicians anyway, right? That, that was a good thing to hear. They found a way to, uh, to pay a percentage, I believe. I don't think they paid in full. So. No, I think it's a percentage. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, wild stuff, man. Uh, what else on the news docket here? Uh, um, well, the eviction overturn, the eviction moratorium overturn. Right. What, what, um, what do you hear about that, brother? <clears throat> well, I mean, I just read that it was overturned and uh supreme court i believe did that right with uh three liberal justices dissenting the the u.s supreme court or the uh the no Texas i think supreme it was court. it was the u.s the the u.s supreme court mm -hmm. um overturned the moratorium right so they're estimating 10 11 million people are going to be relatively immediately at risk of losing their homes or their housing whatever it is and you're you're talking about the, the cdc moratorium yeah for the the whole country no no uh oh. biden's oh biden's. i see uh, the yeah. white house one all right yeah right. yeah this is just bad economics well you know it's just it shows how uncaring a lot of the people have become about what everybody's going through in this pandemic. I mean, it's everybody's out for their own and they're just, they're not willing to see the predicament that a lot of people are in. They just don't want to see it. it it's part of that, uh, the toxic individualism that has sort of defined the last several decades in our country. <clears throat> well, individualism and anti-governmentism. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> sort of the same thing, but yeah. Yeah, they, they they can't see how not supporting the society is going to make things worse, even for themselves individually, in the long run. Yeah, you know, it's very short sighted. Yeah, yeah. and and how are we going to control COVID if people don't even have houses to go to? It's it's yeah. Well, I mean, well, you know, just put those people out. I mean, you will still have your mortgages to pay too. Mm -hmm. So. What yeah, it, to them will happen to you. It's not. It's not helping the landlords either. No, it's not helping them either. No. Yeah. And and I heard a, a curious thing actually this morning on NPR that said that that only what was it uh, a small percentage of the money that had been allocated for renters and landlords had actually has actually been used, like ten or fifteen percent of it. Not not yeah. a big amount. Yeah, and that's, so I, I, that's a problem seems, locally too, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems crazy to cancel that when it haven't, hasn't even been used up yet. But, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, and yeah, it, and it, yeah, it just guarantees that those those landlords won't get all that back rent. Right? Yeah. If, yeah. They, if they evict now, you know. They're, they're, they lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, yeah, I think it, it, what you said about the, about the, the money still being there, that it hasn't been allocated or hasn't been distributed. Right. I think that has a lot to do with, with how it's being distributed. I mean, a lot of folks, you know, are waiting, are still waiting to hear whether they qualify or trying to qualify or trying to figure out how to qualify. Um, you know, I, I heard uh, on the PBS NewsHour the other day uh, about Houston and how, 
you know, Houston and what Harris County had two separate rent relief programs and and the residents were confused about which one to to apply for so they they combined them hmm. to the same one and that actually increased the number of people that that got help um because it eliminated that confusion you know and that was a really good example um i don't know if that's a problem here but it there there are problems you know i mean a lot of times the applications on the internet people don't have internet access or they're trying to they're trying to do it on their phones or something, and and it doesn't work on the phone, you know. And so, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes and just yeah, just figuring out what those barriers are, uh, you know, takes time and resources in and of itself. And we haven't really done that, and that proves it. What what you said, Mark, that the money is still there, you know, that yeah. just hasn't been distributed. That's a real shame. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well. Um, but that so that's that's nationally, um, but locally, I, I think their their rent relief program is still in place even if the moratorium goes back up. So there there may still be time to to get rent relief yeah. help. Um, so don't give up on that uh, if you're if you're pursuing that uh, if you're waiting if you're waiting to apply don't don't wait if but if you're if you're waiting to hear whether or not you qualified. Um, Maybe that's like maybe that could be like the uh, the TWC thing. Maybe maybe the state senator's office could help with that or something like that, uh, or your state representative, um, or if it's a city thing, maybe your your city councilman uh, or woman uh, could could help with that. <coughs> Those elected officials that I mean that is what they're there for, you know. And everyone right. has you know local government, state government, federal government representatives. That's what a do- democracy is. So, and those, those politicians' offices are, you know, are helping their constituents to some degree. Uh, I think all of them are. Um, so, uh, yeah, don't, don't be afraid to reach out to them. That is one of the things also on the, on the links at the bottom, who represents me, right? You can find out who, who represents you locally, state, nationally, um, and how to get a hold of them. And that's, that's really important. So, man goodness um well geez uh uh we we lost uh nancy griffith this week um who was a a local union member um she was actually a member of nashville currently but uh uh, an afm member and uh big austinite um and we lost uh what dusty dusty last week from uh zz top oh man and yeah lots of lots of folks unfortunately um but uh, our hearts go out to their families and everything else. Um, and then, gosh, I mean, speaking of the elected officials thing and the toxic individualism, <laughs> uh, do we want to talk about the, the Dan Patrick thing? Uh, I mean, that, it's just just uh, astounding. That's a horrible story. Uh, you know, um, and of course it's been fact-checked now, and of course it's completely false. And, um <clears throat> moreover just doesn't help the effort to have everybody get vaccinated you know and he, he basically came out and said this is our lieutenant governor you know said that that the the surge is being caused by uh african americans who haven't got vaccinated and by democrats who haven't gotten vaccinated and of course he's a republican um so uh yeah yeah yikes um well like i said that that's been you know, you know and it, 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 yeah. it goes bigger than that mm-hmm. i mean you see how come police treat us the way they do. Mm. When people make idiotic statements like that, that dehumanize a whole race. Mm. I mean, that, that's, what, that's what's meant by the words you, systemic. People are starting to yeah. use systemic in reference to racism and because it pervades the whole, the whole structure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's not just it's not just stupid, it's pernicious. Yeah, oh man, that's you know, great It's not just stupid to say stuff like that. It's actually really, really harmful. Mm-hmm. And there, there will be no consequences for this. Nothing. <clears throat> no censor, nothing. It's just out there. Move on. Yeah, well, I mean, the sad part is that, the, you know, there's really a lot of people who... Believe them. 
Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, I don't know, I don't know how to con counteract that, you know, but there's probably a lot of people who think, yeah, you're right. Well, so when, you know, let's see, the, the, I mean, the article, <clears throat> the, there's an article in the Statesman about it today that fact checks it and finds it false. Um, and when did he actually say it? I mean, it was like, I don't know, five days ago or something? Uh, August two, 19th of the last week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, last week. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, yeah, this this is the, the consequence, I guess, is the, the fact check article, but, you know, um, I, the real consequence has to be in the election, we got, we got a vote. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, anybody with, you know, any common sense knows that that is completely asinine. Mm -hmm. And just totally unbelievable. And this is what you get from your elected official who is in the leadership position. Not only in leadership position, but this is the a-hole that sets the agenda for leadership right yeah he, he sets the agenda for the for the senate right for the texas yeah. state senate and yeah yeah and not only it's, it's not just that it's hurtful to people but but it's hurtful to the the effort of the entire government right now to to keep covid19 under control which should be the focus oh, yeah, of their you, effort you have yeah. nothing better to do in no. the senate to talk about this yeah mm -hmm. you have nothing better to do than have your elected officials say something as stupid as this. Yeah. <clears throat> Incredibly. Uh, just outrageous. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Who represents me is, <laughs> is the link that's available at the bottom. And yeah. uh, that'll let you know who's representing you. And, and let, let them know. Let and them now know. Now you see why Abbott's working so hard to, to, to get you to not be able to vote. Right. Yeah. That's all related. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, there was a little bit of news with that in the national level, right? The John Lewis Voting Rights Act. It passed. Passed mm -hmm. in, in the House, right? Passed the House. Passed yeah, the right. House. So now it's going back to the, back to the Senate. The Senate. And they, they're, they're saying that, that that's the one that they think has the best chance of passing, although they're they don't know what the real chance is of it, but but they think it's it has a better chance than than the other one, which included it but had extra things as well, right? The uh, HB one or something, the for for the people yeah. act, I think, right? So well, they're, they're they're saying that they are going to pass a version of it. Mm -hmm. Don't know what that means. Who knows? Right. I mean, will it entail a bunch of riders? Would you? Know, who knows? Well, I mean, the issue is not with the Republicans on that because they're going to down the line vote against it. Mm. The issue is with Mnuchin and and uh, the other gal there, who who are the moderates who. Oh, Joe, Joe yeah. Manchin, you mean? Yeah. 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 Uh, Manchin, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, those are the ones that have to come aboard in order to get to the fifty that was required to get yeah. the bill to pass. Yeah, so. they they got to be totally together on it for it to to get through. Right. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, that that bill, you know, would uh, uh, just just that one, even though it's it's smaller than the other bill, you know, would still, you know, fight these these voter suppression acts uh, in in the state legislatures. It would uh, require that uh, um, the the district lines when they're redrawn and gerrymandered. Yeah, I was just gonna say it would cure some of this gerrymandering, but. You know, and they know that, so you know, the status quo loves the status quo, so they'll fight hard against this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the, with the gerrymandering thing, the districts, it, it requires all that to be approved by the federal government every time they do it. So then that prevents it from being quite so partisan, hopefully. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's another thing, uh, you know, there, there, there's lots of ways to, to write your... your uh, your senators about that, although we know our Texas senators are are opposed to it uh, pretty uniformly. But uh, we can let them know how we feel, and the best way to let them know is when we vote for them again. <laughs> again, yeah. Yep. Mm. <clears throat> yes, indeed. So. Yeah, and, you know, one of the thing that I... <sighs> This is kind of hard to say, but, you know, there's so much polarizing and polarity and, 
you know, people like Abbott and so on, making ridiculous statements and, and doing stuff that a lot of us consider to be really idiotic. And in the face of all that, I guess I just sit here and just think, okay, let's meet in the middle somehow. You know, in other words, I still try to have an attitude of not excluding people, not being angry at people, uh, not ruling people out because of one thing that they say or another. It's not easy to do that nowadays, I, I have to say. But, you know, I mean, we're, we're not going to get that attitude from them, right? So if anybody's going to have that attitude, it's going to be us. And it seems like an attitude that there is some there could be some happiness from or some, uh, you know, forward thinking from or some advantage somehow from. So just want to throw that out there. Oh, I believe, I mean, there, there there's common ground if we want it to be. Yeah. I mean, everybody is so locked in on their position that <clears throat> nobody wants to, to, to give. I mean, Yeah. I mean, you're you're 100 percent correct, Mark. I, I, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's not easy to do. I mean, it, it's just you know, we we live in a place. I just I just visited Vermont, you know, for several days, and you know, most of the people up there are vaccinated, and there's not a lot of COVID, and you know, it's just a whole different vibe up there. And also, you know, a lot of people are democratic there despite the fact that they have a republican governor who's actually doing a really pretty good job you know but the it, it's it, it's easier in a place like that to kind of feel open-minded and generous and outgoing than it is here at least for me because there's so many people here who don't think that way so you know but you still you have to hang on to that somehow i guess i don't know no, that that went very well said, sir. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I think it just it goes back to this the idea of collectivism and working together. It's really yeah. just becoming clear. We're just being it's being demonstrated over and over again that that's better for business in general. Like regardless of how you feel about it, morally even like it's better for business whenever you know no one is no one is healthy till everyone's healthy. No one's safe till everyone's safe uh, and. Yeah, there, there's just no other way to do it. We have to have to stick together. Otherwise, it's, none of this is going to work. So, right on. Well, uh, are there any other any other topics we should bring up before we sign off here, guys? Uh, oh, I think we were going to talk about the the new governor's order <laughs> again. <laughs> about uh, gosh, did we talk about this yet? We didn't. We didn't. In the, we talked we didn't. in the pre-show. Yeah. Uh, so what was this yesterday or two days ago? Yeah, uh, he, he he quickly uh, <laughs> updated his order to uh, get around the federal mandate, I guess, that state employees can't force their employees to be vaccinated. And this is in response the, to the, the the Pfizer vaccine being approved. It being approved now, now it's right. no longer considered experimental. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's basically just an update of the, the previous orders. But yeah, this, no governmental entity can compel any individual to receive a COVID-19 vaccine. Um, and there's excep exceptions for nursing homes and state-supported living centers. Um, and then, yeah, then, yeah, there, there, but there's also things about, uh, you know, how private businesses can't, can't compel customers to show vaccine, but but no, they're they're not saying anything about private businesses and employees yet. Um, so that could affect us as musicians potentially. Um, although, of course, I mean that's the thing. Not, with, with us, like we've been saying, it's it's not gonna. Our business isn't really gonna come back till everybody's back 100% for a while, and then maybe our business sure. will come back, you know, full blast. So it's almost. It's almost not relevant to us because we've got to wait for them to sort this out so that the COVID numbers go down enough to where we can work again, you know, even though most of us are working to some extent where, where we can. So, yeah, it's... It's pretty it's, funny. I mean, this is just kind of his way of, 
a preemptive strike against all the mandates that he knows are coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we are hearing about that, you know, nationwide, right? You're hearing about venues that are that are doing it, and um, yeah, different. Well, different it's going to be it's going to be mandatory in the military now, and, and he knows that it's it's coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're you're hearing some of that from through the VA, maybe or something like that. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeez. So. And federal employees. And I was telling you about the the, the airline that, that that's telling people, you know, either you take the the vaccine or we're gonna attach a two hundred dollar rider to your health insurance. Oh, and escalators. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, we're just gonna tax you out of a job. Because the the that. That two hundred dollars goes up yeah. each month or something like that. Is that? Oh my gosh! Yeah, I don't, I don't understand how how the escalators kick in, but basically you won't afford you won't be able to afford to keep up with them. Yeah! Wow! Wow! Man. I don't know if that's legal. <laughs> that seems kind of questionable. Yeah, we're gonna find out, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna find out. Man, but it, it goes it goes back to you know the collectivism thing, you know, and, and thinking about other other people. You know, I mean we. We have to figure out, you know, how we can we can keep in touch and keep keep talking with our brothers and sisters that are that are still hesitant about these things because we we need them, you know, we need them to get to get on board and you know and get get to uh, get vaccinated, use the masks, you know, where where it's needed because um, that's the only way we're going to get out of this thing. And yeah. then and then our business can come back. I mean, it's not like any of those things allow our business to come back full blast by themselves. They don't, you know, I mean, they allow us to try, you know, but it ain't, now it ain't Dr. Back. Fauci says that normalcy should be, if we get vaccinated next spring. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to take a while, you know, they're, they're, they're talking about a Lambda variant potentially, in the future, I don't yeah, know if yeah, that's already yeah, surfaced yeah. somewhere, but they don't know what the effects are yet. And yeah, yeah, they just keep moving the goalposts, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Yeah, so you look like Charlie Brown and Lucy with the football. You know? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> whoosh! Yeah, goodness. Oh goodness. Well, not try not to be. Uh, yeah, not to end on quite so much of a down note, <laughs> but uh, I think we're going to take next week off because it's Labor Day. Um, and, uh, you know, unions celebrate labor, labor, so, <laughs> obviously. So, uh, we'll Hopefully be back we get in. to labor. Hopefully we'll get some gigs. We yeah, we want that labor, man. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yeah, the outdoor gigs seem to be coming back. If you can find an outdoor gig, do it. If you can create an outdoor gig, I mean, we've seen a lot of our brothers and sisters creating work in their driveways in some, some ways, you know, you got to find some way to make money on it, but, uh. We've heard from several people that have done that, um, so that can be one way to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, outdoor gigs are, are definitely the way to go, even though it's hot. Oh, it's hot! Ooh. So stay hydrated if you're out there. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any any other uh, any other topics to bring up before we before we mm -hmm. take off? I don't think so. Okay. Awesome. If you wouldn't mind hanging for just a second, I got something I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, sure. we'll, we'll see everybody else in, in two weeks. Uh, if you're in the music business, don't give up. Um, we can get through this by staying together, uh, sharing information with solidarity, join a union, use a contract, um, protect yourself, protect everybody. Uh, no one's safe until everyone's safe. So uh, we'll see you.